Good evening and welcome to Quebec Debate 2018. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this historic first. The late leaders of Quebec's four main political parties here to speak to you, the English community, in the first ever televised English debate. Manon Massé from Quebec Solidaire, Jean-François Lisée from the Parti Québécois, François Legault of the Coalition Avenir Québec, and Philippe Couillard of the Quebec Liberal Party. All here to answer your questions tonight and try to convince you why their party deserves your vote. And of course, we invite you to join in the conversation online using the hashtag, hashtag DebateQC. Now, tonight's debate was organized by a consortium of English media organizations, uh, CBC, Quebec, CTV, Global, City, CJAD, and of course, the Montreal Gazette. It's my pleasure now to introduce you to your moderators for tonight's debate, Deborah Arbeck of CBC Montreal and Mitsumi Takahashi of CTV Montreal. Good evening. Tonight's debate will cover six themes. They are education, health, economy, identity and immigration, environment, and relations with English-speaking Quebecers. We asked our audiences to submit their questions and from them, we chose six. You'll see them tonight. They'll be addressing the questions directly to the leaders. Each leader will have the opportunity to answer. There'll also be six open debate periods on these themes. All right, something you will want to watch tonight is our timers. They're up there on those big screens. Each of the leaders' cumulative speaking time is logged and displayed. And we want to make sure everyone gets as close to equal time tonight as possible. Each leader will have an opening and closing statement, and the order of those statements and the responses to tonight's questions was decided by a draw. So, let's get started. Our first opening statement is from Manon Massé, and Manon Massé, you have 45 seconds. Thank you. Tonight is the first time many of you will hear about Quebec Solidaire. I'm happy to have this chance to talk to you about our commons future. I'm here to talk about dental care for everyone, free education, and a way out of the climate crisis. I'm here to explain how we can make it possible. For too long, elections have been about more of the same. More cuts for you, more money for the big corporations and the super rich, more division, when we need to stand together. Ms. Massé, thank you very much. Mr. Lise, your turn. For me, the most important feature in politics and in life is honesty. Our founder, René Lévesque, is my guide. Although our commitment is ironclad that we won't hold a referendum in the first mandate, I strongly believe, like him, that Quebec is unique and should be independent. Like him, I want French to be our official and common language, and I won't equivocate on this issue, unlike the Liberals. Like him, I recognize the value of Quebec's English-speaking community, and I firmly defend the rights of Anglo citizens and institutions against all comers. I stood with you in battles against the Liberal government when it took away control over English hospitals and tried to scrap English school boards. Thank I you, the Mr. Thought, I walk Thank the walk. you. Mr. Legault. Good evening. It's a great pleasure to speak directly with my fellow English-speaking Quebecers. Tonight, I'm asking for your support. Liberals have been in power for 15 long years. It's time for a change. My position is clear. It's clear. I want to build a strong Quebec within Canada. You're no longer forced to choose between Quebec and Canada, the PQ and the Liberals. Your choice is in this election is clear-cut. On the one side, the old entire liberal government. On the other, my party that will bring about positive uh, change. This evening, I will explain my plan to build a richer Quebec. Thank you very much, Mr. Legault. Mr. Couillard, you have 45 seconds. Welcome to this historic English debate. Over the next 90 minutes, I look forward to talking about issues that matter to you and your family issues that concern all Quebecers. Thanks to our sound fiscal management, Quebec is at a turning point. We now have the means to make life easier for all Quebecers. 
If re-elected, we will increase the number of super clinics, provide free dental care, invest in our teachers and healthcare workers, and keep our economy rolling. Our vision of Quebec leaves no one behind. It unites us instead of dividing us. As a strong, united Quebec, we make Canada better. I look forward to sharing our vision and our program with you. Thank you, Mr. Cuillard. So our first theme this evening is education. The English school system is a pillar of the community. Graduation rates in English public schools are consistently higher than their French counterparts. But then we lose many of those graduates to other provinces. Have a listen to Adrienne Winrow of Montreal and what she wants to know about that. I went through the English public school system. I'm happy I got a job in Quebec, but it took one year of French university for me to be truly comfortable enough in French to seek employment here. Uh, many of my fellow students left for Ontario because they did not feel comfortable enough with their level of French. My question is, what can be done at the public school system level to equip and encourage Anglophone youth to look for employment in Quebec upon graduation? Thank you, Adrian. Now we will answer this question. You'll all have a chance in one minute to answer that question. Manon Massé, once again, you drew first, so you get to start. <clears throat> you know, for Quebec Soldat, I just reaffirmed that it's very important to recognize that we are in a French place. And I totally understand that it could be difficult for someone who did all his uh, elementary and high school in English, or maybe university too, as you, it's maybe difficult, but at the same time, where, where we are able to uh, practice our French, it's in the workplace, it's in the common place. So for Quebec Soldat, what we want to do is to give the opportunity uh, to speak French in the workplace by applying the, the Bill 101 for the enterprise, for the companies, uh, over 20 employees. That make French very around. Thank you, Madame Massé. Jean-François Lisée, you're next. Well, uh, Adiran, you are exactly on point. I mean, there are two reports, one here educating Quebec Anglophones and another one uh, creating space. Mr. Lise, I have oh, to stop you there. Just no documents, okay. please. The documents do exist. I will not show them. <laughs> but they say exactly that. That the level of uh, ability in French when you get out of an English CGIP or university is lacking. And so it's, it's as though we were giving a diploma with a ticket to Toronto. We want every English student in Quebec to stay in Quebec, to thrive in Quebec. And I know that's what all the parents want. So we are proposing this time around that CGEP students have an enriched track of French in the CGEPs, an immersion session in a French CGEP of their choice in Montreal or elsewhere, so that they can be as good in French with their diplomas as their Francophone counterparts. Uh, the, 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 the person who will hire you will want to make sure you can read and write the memo, will make sure that you thrive in our job market. Thank you, Mr. Lise and Mr. Legault. Yeah, I think first it's important to repeat that we have to protect French in Quebec and French will always be vulnerable in North America because of the under the millions of Anglophones. But I agree, we have to help more the Anglophones to learn French and also French to learn more about English. And I think the best way, and it exists already, is to have full immersion in the fifth or in the sixth grade. That's the best way to learn another language. I think that about 20% of the schools right now offer full immersion, which means a full year in French or at the opposite, a full year in English. I think we have to offer that to all children, maybe except the ones having learning difficulties, but in the fifth and the sixth grade, it's the best place to learn French. Thank you, Mr. Legault and Mr. Cuya. Yes, English-speaking Quebecers, of course, are an integral part of our history, therefore of our society. And again, it should be said and repeated that they are like all Quebecers, first-class Quebecers. So their rights and institutions matter. Institutions like school boards. We will always protect the school boards that the English-speaking community has built. And we heard that there is a significant history of success among English-speaking school boards. 
also in some French-speaking school boards as well. And if you look at the recipe, how come these school boards are so efficient in graduating their students? Part of the success, I think, is involvement of the community. The school is part of the community. Parents go there, they get involved, they vote more for school commissioners, which is another reason to keep the school boards as they are. As far as youth goes, a significant percentage of young English-speaking Quebecers are bilingual. Some of them might want to learn more. This is what we will provide through the Secretariat that we will discuss later. We are providing funds to increase that type of teaching. Thank you, Mr. Quia. We know English language education is guaranteed under the Constitution, but without the political will and support, it simply cannot thrive. Enrollment continues to fall year after year. So we ask you, what will you do to ensure the survival of English school? And Ms. Massé, once again, you drew first, so you get to start. First, we'll, we will uh, keep all the school board because they have a big role to play. But also, we will invest, reinvest, because the liberal cut a lot uh, in the public uh, service, uh, in the education system, and we will by this reinvestment, improve the condition in the classroom. This is very important. So let's say that Quebec Soldat will um, uh, give better recognition to the, to the teachers, uh, better pay for them, uh, reduce the number of, uh, of students in each class, and, uh, and of course, facilitate the, the teacher work by hiring more professional because, you know, teacher needs help to, uh, to, and this is all about investment or reinvestment. And what did the liberal, it's a very bad job in our school. Well, if I, I may, take, I think uh, I will take the exception to this, Kuyar, if you allow uh, me. Mr. Kuyar? I will take exception to this because we had to balance the books. Everybody knows that. Actually, all the parties had committed themselves to balancing the books, not the only one. Should I go did, the PQ did, but we came into office and we did it. So now we have the means of our ambitions and we can invest and we have invested in schools and now we are over 3,000 3, more people working in our schools, teachers, professionals of all kinds. And we want to go further. A second person in each class at kindergarten and grade one. Free daycare at four year olds so you get all ready for proper schooling. And also better pay for, for teachers starting at grade seven of pay scale from the first year of employment, which is $10,000 more a year. Mr. Lise wanted that? to get in yeah, on this. Yeah, Mr. Couillard, you're the only person here who believed there were no, no cuts in education, English and French in the last few years, but I want to come back to the main point, and I think you're both missing the point. The question is not how good is the English system to teach French to youngsters. They invented immersion classes. It's superb. The problem is that once they go out of high school to CJEP in university, their French is degrading. And I'm just reading from the advisory board on English education that said, this is so dire. And you know that we lose 30,000 people a year leaving Quebec. And many of them are our youngsters. And the, the advisory board said, we should make learning a second language in English compulsory in the four semesters of CJEP. English language CJEP should be encouraged to offer bilingual programs. English language and French language CJEPs cooperate in offering both joint yeah, programs but, and immersion. Mr. And so what we say here is that for the first time, let's be serious about the fact that we want to keep these children here, these youth here, by making sure that they have a diploma that enables them to, to thrive in the French market. And I, I see no political will but in either of Mr. you Lizet. to provide this French training for our young Anglos. Yeah, Mr. Lizet, not long time ago, you proposed to merge French CJEP and English CJEP. That was a bad idea. I don't know if you change your mind, but I want to come I, back no, to I'm Mr. I'm going to answer him. I want to come back the, to Mr. The, the, the idea, just about to close the this, cut just to close in this. Education. Mr. Legault, yes. you asked me a question. What? Mr. Legault, you asked me a question. I'll answer. Okay. The gist you of, want to merge them? No. The gist, ah, you change your mind. the gist of the proposal. Good. The gist of the proposal, if you're interested, okay. is that French students and French CJEP who want to learn English can go in immersion okay. in an English school. I'm happy that you change and, your mind. And, uh, but you have no proposal. Yeah. You have nothing to say I have about something that. to propose. We have to invest more. We have to pay the teachers mm -hmm. better. Agree. We have to start school in, at four years old, like in Ontario, for everybody. Mm -hmm. We also need to help in high schools having more sports, more arts. Yes. That's why we propose five hours more a week. But Mr. Kouya, mm -hmm. you cut 
in services for children having difficulties. And I've asked you at the National Assembly many times, you answer me that it was necessary to balance the budget. You don't balance the budget no. in Excellent. cutting Excellent. in Excellent. help in aid for children having difficulties. It was an error. Can you admit tonight that you made an error in cutting in services to children having difficulties? Monsieur, Monsieur Legault, I'm afraid, you admit? I'm afraid we'll have to broadcast this video again right yeah. now, where you justified the horrible cuts that the PQ made never. when you had to balance the... You would, come on. It was broadcast and everybody saw it in no. Quebec. It went viral. I Monsieur never... Legault. Now, Mr. we, we never... were able... Excuse me, can I continue? Go ahead, Mr. Quillard. So we were able to re-establish funding because we balanced the books. And we didn't do it by cutting the budget. We just slowed the increase for a couple of years. And then after that, we invested $2.4 billion in education and hired 3,000 teachers and professionals in our schools, which are present today. As for the rest of what you said, I agree. We have to start schooling at four, not necessarily at three kindergarten. That's not what you propose. No, I, 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 we can do it at the uh, daycare centers. We only have 6% of the four years old kids having access to school. Six. No, the problem, Monsieur Legault, is that you're a man of only one book. There's not only one way to school children at four year old. You can do it through pre-kindergarten, or you can do it at okay. daycare we centers have with proper, with proper programs. So okay. there's no way, by the way, you can build these preschools, as you say, okay, you before a few years. And it was not even in your financial statement. Okay, that's you right. Yes, it is. Right. No, yes, it is. It is. You so underestimated. what you're telling me is that in the next mandate, it's impossible to offer schools starting at four years old. No. That's what you say. No. It's impossible. It's possi physically impossible. Not the For me, it's possible. You didn't cost it. It's more than possible. I, we I'm need sorry, to I do it. Mr. Quia, please to, let him I'm answer the question. Speak here. So you can vastly underestimated the cost in your uh, financial Not statement at all. by half. <coughs> at least. By half, Not at all. At least. least. Yes, you did. It's a rough draft. It's I'm a, a statement. I, I, by the way, you're a doctor. I'm a chartered accountant. Well, let me tell I you. I think I know the numbers well, better than you Monsieur do. Legault, if my yeah. accountant had given me the statement, I would have yeah. fired him. Uh, yeah. Mr. Well, we have the, let Mr. Yeah. Lise get in a moment, please. You know, Mr. Lise has talk, a chance now. Talking to the accountant, you yeah. have promised to take away $700 million of tax, school taxes every year. You think we, cannot, we can afford that? You know that 40% of you, Quebecers... Do you say that you will raise taxes? I don't say that. Don't disinform the so people, why? please. But don't why disinform do you say that the you're people. against cutting 700 million? You, you're, you're saying that there's 700 million too much okay. that we don't need that will cut but in taxes. You That's said, your proposal. You said Let that me that finish my question. Again, the tax cut. E exactly. Are you still against the tax cut that <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you why. Because you're against? I will tell you why. So you will Not raise his, taxes? Yours, yours, okay? 700 okay. million more. Will you raise taxes? Will no, you we will not. You know that very okay. well. Stop okay. disinforming people. Okay. Let me ask you a, a simple question. Okay. So you okay. were you against, know, I, now I, you're for. No. You're tough to follow. You are you disinforming. I have, to, I have to ask you, you both to simmer down here for a moment. I want to give I'm Madame... I'm sorry, I, I didn't get to ask the question. So 40% of Quebecers will not get your tax cut because they don't own a house, they rent it. Do you know how much you will save personally with your tax cut? I will tell you, $2,000. That's not the topic. Yeah, that know, is not the topic. Do you we'll know talk how much Paul de Marais Mr. Lise, Mr. Lise, Mr. Lise, Mr. Legault, Mr. Lise, that is not the topic. I want to give Manon Massé enough time to just finish out this round. Let's say we're talking about education, I think so? That's right. Okay, that's right. Cool. So I just want to tell you that Quebec Solidaire will reinvest, you know, 1.6 billion to repair and build school because school are so, you know, not that very is, good. That is all the time we have, but I think we understood oh. what you were saying and reinvestment. Thank you very much, all of you, for that section. Once again, Quebecers say access to health care is the most important issue of the election campaign. We've received several questions about services for families with special needs. So this question comes from Leslie Fraser of Rosemere. My grandson is 16 and he has autism. He was diagnosed at the age of three. There are long waiting lists today for diagnosis and there are fewer resources and services for children as they get older. What will your government do to make early diagnosis, services and treatments more accessible and long term for English speaking families with special needs. Mr. Lise, we start with you. You have a minute. I think the people with special needs were really abandoned in these last few years by the uh, Liberal government who 
you know, made severe cuts all across the board. Uh, in particular, for uh, children with autism, they've delayed and delayed. It was my file, and I, I met so many uh, uh, mothers and, and, and fathers and children that were waiting for a year, two years for a, an early diagnosis. And it's so important to diagnose early because these are the crucial years. So we decided that we would put $60 million more for autism and $60 million more per year for uh, mental health. Because, you know, we can't go on pushing further and further away people who really need uh, diagnosis and intensive, uh, how we say, uh, stimulation in the early years, which is the key to, uh, for success for young people in autism. And we know there are more of them now, not less. So let's not cut anything. Mr. Lise, thank you very much. Mr. Legault. Yes, this is a very important subject. I have in my team Dr. Carmin, who's a neurologist from St. Justin, and he put in place a uh, program to evaluate uh, to have a good diagnostic to, for all children under four years old. Right now, it takes six months to get a diagnostic and another six months to start receiving services. We'll evaluate all children under four years old, and at four years old, we'll start giving them some services in schools. Right now, no other party proposed to offer school for all children of four years old, but it's important. It's one of the reasons why graduation rate are lower in Quebec than in Ontario. In Ontario, schools start at four years old. In Quebec, we have to put that in place. Only the CAQ proposed that. That's the only way we'll help. We have to uh, uh, take Mr. Legault, action thank you very early. Much. Mr. Cuillard, yeah, it's your the, turn. The, Madam's question is about autism, which is a very important subject, and I, as a parent myself, I cannot imagine how these parents can cope with uh, such a challenge, and I congratulate all of them for the energy they put in looking after their children. And of course, we try our best to accompany them, and actually we funded an action plan for autism. One of the problems uh, it was alluded to, I think, is a race to diagnosis. As you said, no treatment starts before the diagnosis has been confirmed. So yes, we will put treatment before even the diagnosis is confirmed, before we need to get the code from the ministry and you know all these formulas that need to be filled. And also as children get older, parents worry. So I was asked by parents, can you please develop more daycare, day centers, sorry, for our adult autistic children, which we will do. And also when they get older after 18, if they cannot work, they will get a full guaranteed income for all their life, which will alleviate the anxiety of parents towards the future of these children when they get older as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Couillard. Ms. Massé, you have a minute. Thanks for your question. Um, you know, what did the Liberal Party? It's so much cuts in the public budget. Not cuts, they said. They just restrained the budget. And that have big impact, especially for the kids and this very important moment we call evaluation. We have, it's so long to have an evaluation. Though, so the only way to get more services for your kids and for other people, it's to take the money where it is and put it where it needs. And for Quebec Soldats, be sure that we'll have the courage to take the money from the big pharma, from the big business, because we think that citizens uh, need it. Ms. Massé, thank you very much. You know, that every election campaign, every party promises to make health care a top priority. But still, a lot of Quebecers saying they don't have access to the health care services they need. If you are elected, what differences will Quebecers see in the health care system? We're going to open it up now to the debate. Mr. Lise, you get to start. I think we have to look at the issue completely differently. It's been really a doctor-based policy since Mr. Legault was Minister of Health and then, of course, Mr. Couillard. And I think we should open up, like in Ontario, like in the U.S., like in Europe. There are 200,000 professionals of health, uh, nurses, specialized nurses, uh, pharmacists, uh, paramedics, and all others that can provide immediate, direct clinical help to people in need. And this would 
alleviate the waiting times for doctors themselves or for hospitals. We think we should have a specialized nurse in every CLSC in the territory of Quebec from 9 o'clock in the morning, 9 o'clock at night, every day of the week. And so if you have a small emergency, don't go to the hospital. Go to the CLSC, and in 90% of the cases, she will be able to fix your problem. And this will reduce waiting times in the emergency. As of now, these nurses, some of them move to Toronto, move to Ontario, because there they're respected and autonomous, and here they're disrespected. They, they, they're under okay, the yoke of the doctors. We want to yeah. free them. We will, Mr. Lugo would like we to... will never solve problems in our health system until we have family doctors and nurses available seven days a week. Mr. Kouya said in 1999, before being in politics, that we have to change the way we pay the family doctors. Right now, they are paid per volume. So they, they don't have any incentive to delegate uh, some work to nurses. We have to change the way we pay the family doctors. And they have, together with nurses, they have to be available seven days a week. Mr. Kouya was Minister of Health for five years, Prime Minister, Premier for four years. How come it didn't change? the way we pay the family doctors. Well, then that's let the Mr. Kuyard answer that key. question. Yeah, I told you the other day. Actually, yeah. it has changed, not as you say, it has changed. And we always must be careful to balance productivity, seeing patients, and other aspects of the doctor's uh, job. And you alluded to primary care. I think parents listening to us who come back home after work and with kids that have ear pain and fever, they don't want to go to the large emergency room. They want to go to a clinic like these super clinics we have now around Quebec. 49 of them, we want to develop 25 more around Quebec. And we know it works because until now, 70,000, like, it's like Drummondville, 70,000 people use the clinic instead of going to the emergency room. So that's part of the solution. They did that but we also, we also want uh, to uh, offer free dental care for seniors and kids up to 16 yeah, years old. So and also, an as, as, we, as we discussed earlier, provide even more autonomy, which you we did didn't already, answer and my better question. for nurse practitioners, pharmacists, Mr. and other Kuyar. health professionals. Mr. Legault, Mr. Kuyar, Mr. Legault, right now, Mr. Legault, wait, wait Legault. I'd like to just give yeah. Ms. Okay. Massé an opportunity to yeah. speak in this. Um, it's funny to hear you to say that you'll give uh, dental care for... You, you take our idea because you know that it's a popular one. You ne you, you've been... The, the Liberal Party has been at the government for the last 15 years and you never want to change the relation between the dentist and the hygienist. This is the only way that we can afford uh, 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 dental care to our population. That's why Quebec Solida said that what we want is a dental care insurance for everyone, but not only until 16 as yours, but on free until 18, yeah. and after that, we'll reimburse some percentage. Mr. Creole, so, would you like to yeah, answer you know, that? Respectfully, you know, I, I think we need to be more realistic. You know, to provide free dental insurance for everyone, plus all the other promises we made, which are worth now $12 billion. Of course. We have to find the money somewhere, obviously. And so the reason why we selected uh, seniors with low income is that we know that mouth but care has a significant impact on the health status of elderly people. And we also increased coverage until 16 years old. This is something we can afford now. We could not have afforded a few years ago, but we can afford now you because of the way we manage you, the public finances. No, excuse, never me for a second. excuse me for a second. I don't want to get bogged down too much on the dental care because I sure. think people are yeah. concerned about health care in general. Another thing that I would like to also ask you all is about health care in the regions. Yes. English-speaking Quebecers want English health care, especially in the regions. What can you do to guarantee that? Quebec Solda will, uh, will uh, provide uh, services very close to the people, and uh, that means CLSC is open 24 hours a day, uh, seven days a week. And let's say when I've been in uh, Gaspésie uh, in the last time, I totally saw that English people have problems to have uh, services. So we were, w w I'm not a specialist of everything, but I can say I will be listening. Okay, I'd like to get everybody else to weigh yeah. in on this uh, as well. We, uh, actually, we reactivated, almost resuscitated the regional committees 
on English uh, healthcare for English speaking citizens. Because these are the persons who are going to watch out for policies and be sure that they don't impact negatively on people's health. When I visited the gas pay like you, I met with uh, the community groups in New Carlisle who told me about the difficulties they had accessing public services, not only healthcare, Alpha Quebec as well, and other types of uh, public services. And I was moved by this. And this is the reason, actually, I decided, decided on that day, meeting these people, to create the Secretariat and, and nominate a minister exclusively responsible for relations with English. Okay, I'm just going to move this on because I want to make sure that Mr. Lise and, and Mr. Legault uh, have time to speak. Mr. Legault? Yeah. I think that the importance in the region and everywhere in Quebec is to make sure that each Quebecer have access to a family doctor the same day or the day after. Right now, 59% of Quebecers, they don't have access to a family doctor the same day or the day after. And I have a question for Mr. Kouya. We cannot talk about health without talking about the fact that the increased salary for specialists by $1 billion too much when we compare with Ontario. That's where the money went in health care. To the specialists, they are the only professional earning more than in Ontario. So how can you explain? How were you able to do that with no comparative uh, uh, study? You know very well, Monsieur Legault, that we didn't give any new money to the doctors and specialists. We just spread their increases over time because this is money that they were owed, whether you like it or not. Whether you say that you can or not, you could not tear this agreement apart because what we got from the agreement is guaranteeing services for anesthesiologists in Maniwaki, in La Pocatière, in Lechuk, all these places like now it's going, question, it's happening right now. And Same we're just going to hand it over now to Mr. Lise. Okay, first you missed completely the point, Mr. Legault. The question was not about doctors. It was about providing health care in English in the regions. Mm -hmm. We are committed to continuing the service. I famously wrote a speech in the center where Mr. Bouchard said, when you, you're, you're, you're in pain and you get to the hospital, you don't need a language test. That was a good speech. That was a good speech. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need a, a language <laughs> test. You need a blood test. But by the same token... Both of you want the Ontario government, Doug Ford, to decide how much our doctors will be paid. We want Come Quebecers on. to decide how much doctors will be paid here. And there's no reason why they would be the only professional or only people in uh, Quebec okay. that would Thank have the same as Ontario. Agree. Thank you very much, Mr. Lise. Okay, we're going to switch topics and we're going to move on to the economy now. Let's face it, Quebec's economy is booming. Unemployment rates have hit record lows and government coffers have a healthy surplus. Still, overall, we're paying the highest taxes in the country. And that's what Mike Fahey's question from Gatineau is about tonight. Many seniors in Quebec are living in poverty, can barely make ends meet, yet they still have to pay income tax. What would your party do to relieve the tax burden on all Quebecers, especially seniors? Mike, thank you very much for your question. And Francois Legault, yeah. you can respond first. You have one minute and then we'll go around. Yeah. First problem and the most important economic problem we have in Quebec is the level of salary. The average salary in Ontario is $52,000. In Quebec, it's $47,000. And this gap of 11% was there 15 years ago and hasn't changed since 15 years ago. So yes, the average salary increase in Quebec, but increase more, and the difference is still the same. We propose three things for seniors. First, we will reduce school taxes by another $700 million. Second, for families, we'll give $2,400 per child, a new allowance. And thirdly, we will cut the famous family tax that was put in place by Mr. Couillard for the child care. All right, thank you, Mr. Legault. Mr. Quia. Well, I don't agree uh, on this and other things with Mr. Legault. The main economic challenge of, challenge, uh, challenge of Quebec today is not salary. Salary has been increasing faster in Quebec and the rest of Canada in 2017. It's labor shortage, which still today Mr. Legault refuses to recognize exists. And we know the solutions. One of them is immigration, but also education, full participation in the workforce, and automatization. We know, we know what to do, and we have to do this. But to say that this is not the main challenge is to go to the wrong dire direction. Nobody agrees. Nobody agrees with Monsieur Legault when he says that. Now, as far as the gentleman's question goes, 
we have already indicated that we would increase the disposable income of seniors to a variety of tax credits in order to raise the amount you, you get without paying taxes to up to $30,000. And also for seniors who are active and would like to go back to work, but will not go back to work because of fiscal penalties, they can delay their Régie des Rentes du Québec for a few years without penalty, so they will not get double tax for employment and also their pension. That's the right way to go to keep seniors active and back in the workforce. I just want to remind you to keep your answers to the questions mm -hmm. and not to the other candidates uh, in these sections, mm -hmm. in these one-minute sections. We're just trying to get those answers from our viewers sure. uh, and readers uh, question answered. We'll go on to Manon Massé now. Yeah. Um, of course, seniors play a big role in our society. And uh, for us, as a citizen, very involved in their society. It's so important. So for us, we will um, reimburse, let's say we will reimburse uh, the tax credit for uh, home care, you know, for these people who get older and needs to, uh, to have support to stay home. And it will represent 10,000 a year. We will also uh, reduce the, the bill that you receive. I mean, Hydro-Quebec, uh, the bill that you receive for your, um, your great children. Um, then Quebec Soldat will want to give the possibility to the people, to the senior, to uh, get and go back to the society and get involved for everyone. Thank you, Manon Massé. Jean-François Lisée. Well, I'd like to answer the question of, of the gentleman from the Outaouais. You asked a question about elderly people who who ha have budgetary problems. Mr. Legault answered on family issues and, and school taxes that have no bearing on his situation. I think one of the things that are, is very important is that as you grow older, you should be able to stay in your lodging or your home with a lot of home care. That's the best way to do it. We propose double the amount than the two other main parties propose. We also say that if you are a low-income <coughs> elderly person, you should have $350 extra every year. You do what you want with it. Mr. Kouya made an interesting proposal, uh, as we did, and a different tack on how to make sure that uh, uh, retirees that stay in the workforce keep more of, of their money. Uh, our proposal is that you can opt out of the Régie des Rentes that makes 5% more revenue. Mr. Kouya's proposal is interesting. As Premier, I would try to implement it as Thank well. Thank you, Mr. Lisée. Now, there are some differing views here, clearly, on how to put more money in Quebecers' pockets. Let's talk about the critical issue now of unfilled jobs. Some economists warn the labor shortage is threatening the economic health of Quebec. So what will you do to fill the more than 90,000 job vacancies in the province? This is an open debate question. Mr. Legault, you get to start things off, and then you can all hop in. Okay. First, I want to repeat that for me, the most important economic problem in Quebec is the level of salary. We receive equalization payment because the level of salary is not as high as in the rest of Canada. But yes, we have problem filling some jobs. What do we have to do? First, we have to change the way we choose immigrants. Right now, 26% of new immigrants, they leave Quebec. So there's a major problem there. Second, our dropout rates are a lot higher in Quebec than in Ontario. And that's why we propose to start school at four years old. Because right now, many companies, they are asking for a secondary five before hiring somebody. So Mr. Kouya has to put more emphasis on education, on vocational training, on making sure that people in Quebec, they can accept better jobs and that we invest in our companies to increase productivity and average salary. Thank you. Well, we all agree on productivity, but Monsieur Legault, I don't understand how you can deny the importance of labor shortage. Here you go again. I don't deny Here, you just, you know, I had a quote from you, August 28th, when I'm told that the biggest economic challenge is the shortage of employees. I do not agree. Ask do restaurant not agree. owners in, in Abitibi, they'll be there tomorrow. Ask even people in Montreal, ask the mayor of Montreal today who said that there were 3% uh, un unfilled jobs in, in Montreal, which is a big, big economic problem. Yes, immigration is a solution, but also, and then I agree with you, 
proper education, training for the right jobs of the right skills, full participation in the workforce. Women have made tremendous pro progress in Quebec, but we need to bring seniors to keep them, as we just discussed, in the workforce. First Nations, people living with handicaps, and automatization like artificial intelligence and related technologies that allow us to produce as much goods with less people. So it's a variety of solutions, but it starts with recognizing the problem exists, yeah, Monsieur Legault. How can you I, I say that bring it doesn't exist? How can you explain in? that She's we lose 26 percent? Mr. Legault, I'd like to I'd like to give Manon yeah. Massé an opportunity to come in. Thank you. I think labor shortage. It's a great moment to increase, to improve working conditions. You know, you said that. We, have, we need a better salary for, but you cannot be able to uh, raise the minimum wage to $15. And these people who work 40 hours a week need to have money in their pocket to buy food, to pay their rent, to, you know? But you always said, no, it's impossible. For us, we will because we know that improving the, con the working condition, it's a way to attract people to the job because we have to remember that the unemployment uh, rate, not ratio, but the, le, 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 the unemployment, right. it's, uh, it's the double for the people from the uh, minorities community. Can we explain it? How? Yes, it's the double. It's Let's let point. Mr. Lise get in now, please. Thank you. Well, I would say, Mr. Legault, that uh, work, uh, labor shortage is a real issue. And there are a number of ways to address it. Well, uh, First Nations, for example, Ghislain Picard said, since there were uh, labor shortage in the regions, could we not maximize the employment of uh, the youth from the First Nations and the Inuit? I think it's a great idea. We are losing. 20 to 3,000 people per year who move out of Quebec. Some of them, because they don't speak French, I want them to stay here. We are losing on 50,000 immigrants that you greeted every year. 15,000 have left, half of them because they didn't speak French. I want, the, I want them to stay here, and I want immigrants who are here to partake in the growth that we have. And certainly, we need newcomers to match our needs, but let's not try to pin with the dart if it's 40,000 or 60,000, let's have a fact-based discussion about our needs and have sound public policy with that. But uh, obviously, we should not decrease the number. That's the first obvious That's what thing. you did. Today, the mayor of uh, Montreal said there's no way she would be help of decreasing the number. We didn't do this, by the way. But you, the keep, you, you, one, you, keep, yes. you keep denying that there's a labor shortage. And you, were, and you say the, the issue actually is not enough jobs at $25, $30 an hour. There's a company in Sherbrooke called Super Metal, who the director told you directly, I cannot imagine how Monsieur Legault can say such things. If I were to raise my employees' salaries at $25 an hour today, I would close the company. So okay. it shows total lack of knowledge of the reality of small and medium Mr. businesses. Puyau, you haven't answered the question of Mr. Lise and mine. How come we lose 26% oh, of answer. new immigrants if it's the solution? Why do we lose 26%? Can you admit that it's a failure of your government? Uh, not at all. Uh, what, what, not we at are, all. what we are seeing here is that Monsieur Legault is trying to find an excuse to decrease immigration for whatever reasons, whatever problems he has with immigrants, I don't know. Now, if you look at other provinces in Canada, and more studies will be coming shortly, their loss rate, which of course we regret, would like each of them to stay, is not that difference between, different between Quebec and other large provinces. It's in higher. Canada. You're happy with that. Ours is higher. Not, for all, not, not for all provinces. You will it, see this it very is, shortly. Well, it's, it's, you will it's see this more very than shortly. Most. It's more but than you know, most. Admit this, that. This, no. We're, we're no. not doing as well. We're doing, better, we're doing better than some provinces. 26%? You see, you you're see, happy. You will, you will see this very shortly. You're happy but that we're never, 26%. You know, I, I've never heard a political leader in Quebec ever recommend not only diminishing the number of immigrants we take in, but proposing expulsion tests for immigrants, oh, that is which terrible. make them come very, on, very frightened on. today. They are come frightened on. of what the CAC is proposing. They will submit them to value testing, which nobody knows what it's about, and a French test. And I asked him about a family the other day, what they would do if the, dad, the father 
uh, uh, flunk his exam, and he couldn't answer. I guess you'll just drop you them know, at the McDonald's uh, Cartier Bridge. Can I answer that? You'll, ahead, flunk you them, you'll just drop them on yeah. the McDon McDonald's Cartier Bridge in Hull and say whatever you want, get Come rid on. of these Mr. people. Legault, That's what yeah. people hear when already, they hear you. Already, already, Mr. Cuillard, the federal government has French and English tests and it's also tests of knowledge about so why do you values need one? in so why Canada. Do you need, what do you need so one? why are you against having those tests done by the Quebec government? Why do you agree that they do these tests in Ottawa? But you say uh, Quebec, this is so we you, please, can't. Please, this Why is, is so, that? This no. is so nonsensical. Don't you Do, know? Doesn't make sense. Don't you know? Please, doesn't make don't sense. You know, You're against those tests. Don't you know that when yeah. they pass those tests to become citizen, if they fail the test, they stay in Quebec. Yes. They stay in yeah. Quebec as landed <laughs> immigrants forever if they wish. You would have the federal not government deport them. That's, that's your true. position. That's it is not appalling. That's true. That's true. Your on, position Mr. is true. appalling. We know you don't understand immigration. What you say is that they have to succeed the French test before coming in Quebec, yes. which means that you will refuse people with a lot of qualification, engineers from all kinds of countries, if they don't speak French. Okay, Instead, Mr. Legault, you've I, got, I, you've, I, you've, I, you've I, got I, you have I the last word. I hope we'll be word. back with that. I have yeah. a lot you to have, say about that. I hope we'll be back with that. <laughs> Thank you very much. That closes the economy. But boy, it moves quickly, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. And if you want to talk more about immigration, well, we've got it coming. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> <laughs> because the immigrants have helped shape this province. They will continue to shape this province. But how this process should be undertaken has become one of the central themes, as we see, of this election campaign. Our question on the theme of identity and immigration comes from Akinola Akinbala of Lachine. Question now, yes. I am a refugee from Nigeria, and since I got here, finding a job has been very difficult. I want to ask you, what policy initiative will you be adopting in addressing the provision of English service and job opportunities, especially as, a, as it affects immigrants from English-speaking countries who are making a home here in Quebec? So, Mr. Agingbala is a refugee from Nigeria. He's having trouble finding a job. He'd like to know what you will do to help English-speaking refugees like him to find work. Mr. Cuillard, we start with you. You have a minute. The first thing to note from this very good question is the fact that uh, this gentleman is a refugee and wants to participate in Quebec's economy. And contrary to what people say, refugees do not, are not a negative factor in our economy or a weight on our economy. They do want to participate and find a decent job. That was a very good question. And of course, the answer lays with integration and teaching French. What we are proposing, and we have put significant funding behind these words, is to increase the way we improve the way we select immigrants and bring them in the workforce as early as possible and teach them French at the workforce. That's what we need to do. It will be, I think, much more efficient than the way we're doing it right now because the right way and the best way to in integrate someone in the society <clears throat> is to put them in the labor force with, co with colleagues, other people working with them every day, and then you will get the language with the support of the school boards. That's the way to go. But I, again, must congratulate uh, this gentleman to say, as all refugees do, I want to be a full participant in Quebec's economy, and we should recognize this effort. Thank you very much, Mr. Cuillard. Ms. Massé? Yeah, uh, let's say it's very important to support French language uh, training. So I think that you have to know that Quebec Soldats will reinvest one million eighty-five, um, one eighty-five million. I mean, uh, as you know, my language it's not English as yours, uh, and uh, and it's it's hard to learn a, a new language, and uh, but with real investment in French language training, I think that will help you. Another thing, we will apply strict quotas to hire 25% of people from visible minorities in the public service until we reach a representation rate of 13% at the end of our first term, because for now, it's not the reality. Thank you very much, Ms. Massey. Mr. Lise. Uh, Akimbala, I did get your last name, but uh, I got your question very well. And I think people that come as refugees that we welcome, we have a welcoming uh, tradition in Quebec, waves and waves of refugees. And of course, we won't ask them to learn French uh, at Berlitz if they're under bombs or uh, fleeing an earthquake. And so that our policy will be that as soon as you arrive, don't go and try to find a job immediately. We will take care of you and your family for the first weeks or months. We'll teach you French, how it works here, 
And when you're ready, you will get to the workforce with the skills you need to thrive. That's the issue. We have to be better at giving you the tools for success. And one of the tools of success in Quebec is French, among others. Thank you very much, Mr. Lise. Mr. Legault. I think that this man from Nigeria shows exactly the problem with the Liberal government. In 2003, Mr. Chare uh, increased from 40,000 to 50,000 the number of immigrants, including refugees. But they didn't increase budgets for learning French and for helping these people finding a job. So right now, that's why we have 26% of immigrants leaving Quebec because they haven't learned French, because they didn't recognize their diploma, their experience they had in their country. What we think at the CAQ is that it's better to take less, come back to 40,000, but giving them, each of them, more services with Emploi Québec, make sure that they find a job, give them more uh, French lessons, that's what we have to do, receive them one, receive them well, Thank one by much, one. Thank you Immigrants come here because they want to. They want to stay in Quebec. They want to make it their home. I want to get away from some of the numbers that you are all throwing around because what they're asking about is discrimination. They say that they feel discriminated against, and we'd like to know what you can do to change that. We're going to go now to an open debate. Mr. Cuillard, we start with you. The first thing that we must change, and I don't think all my colleagues are at all responsible for what I'm going to say, the way we talk about immigration and immigrants uh, is not always positive, let me say it that way. When people say that they are a threat to French language in Quebec, and if we continue taking immigrants, our grandchildren will not be speaking French anymore, which is nonsense, frankly nonsense, it's not helping. So yet they have also to feel welcomed, including by the political leaders of the country or the province they come into. Now, of course there is discrimination in our society, in all societies there is. So we have to talk openly about it. I would agree that we need some objectives. Madame Massé was talking about the public service. I agree that we must do better and have some real numbers in terms of objectives to get there. But it starts with how we speak about immigrants. I don't hear all my colleagues on this plateau here say positive things about immigrants lately. Ms. Massé. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not including me, I no, no. hope so. No, not at all. Uh, we are the, uh, let you say, let you know, we are the only party in the last few years who support a public inquiry on systemic discrimination. None of them was able to do that. And we know that systemic discrimination exists here in Quebec. And you know what? It's not to make people afraid about uh, what could happen, but it's the, we know the right of these people to be recognized. And for only one example, the liberal, the liberal government has failed in that subject be, because it, in the last mandate, it made over 2,000 nominations, but appointed only 3% mm. of people from visible minorities. So there's a problem, and Quebec Solda will, as I said, either apply strict quotas to be sure that m visible minorities will get jobs in public sector. Yes. Mr. Lise, you wanted to say something? I agree entirely with you, and I must say, Mr. Couillard, you talk a good talk, but your uh, track record is dismal. If we look after 15 years of liberal government, the proportion of people from the diversity in Hydro-Quebec or in the SAQ or in boards that you nominate is almost, you know, it's, it's almost nil. We pleaded with you, I pleaded with you in the last two years just to introduce two simple measures that would make life better against discrimination. One is to introduce uh, anonymous resumes that increase by 40% the ability to have the hiring interview. The Liberals do it in Ottawa, the British do it, you refuse. The other thing is that some employers require prior local work experience before. And, and if you don't have it, you don't have the work, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the interview. The Ontarians decided we should do away with that to open the door. 
We pleaded with you for two years. You voted against our motions to do that. That would be, we have a bill with 20 measures like this one. It's ready to be passed. We'll pass it in the first year of our government. Okay. But it's not universally yeah. recognized that Can the I, uh, yes, anonymous you know what, Mr. 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 Cuellar, we're going to let try you it. answer that. Why I just want to get it. Mr. Uh, Legault in there okay. as, uh, very let, quickly. Let's focus on the objective. We need a new sense of purpose. We need to support all of those who choose to live in Quebec. I'll do my best. If I become the premier, I'll do my best to welcome each newcomer and their family. I will not accept failure. 26% leaving is a failure. And the Liberal government, they didn't deliver, they didn't help the newcomers in Quebec. And Your words, the numbers you're speak them for themselves. How can the rest, Excuse me. I need to answer the rest, that. Yes. The rest is yeah. just okay. smoke and mirror yeah. from somebody who had a poor performance in integration. Okay, Mr. Criard, you can answer. Unfortunately, Monsieur Legault, I yeah. must repeat, it's distressful to hear you speak about immigration the way you do it. Submitting people to testing, which is not needed. Threatening them, threatening them and their families with expulsion. That's right. Threatening men, threatening them of, with expulsion. Incredible. And if they don't, what is incredible? You, you never you said say, that. What you, but say you said that. unacceptable. Oh, yeah? It's your you program, sir. You cannot discuss you in a calm that. way no. about better integration. I'm going to say, you had a failure. I'm going to say, to go very calmly, very yeah. calmly to do, that your policy is not acceptable. Yeah. Right, submitting right. immigrants to testing and expulsion you had a is the opposite of what you, you had can a do. Failure. You would be worse. You would be worse telling people, come here, and in three years' time, I may ask Ottawa to deport you. That's worse than him. He didn't do enough to integrate. You, you would, would scare no. them away. I would look... Mr. Dizet, you say that if somebody doesn't learn French before coming to Quebec, he wouldn't be accepted under... What you propose? You no, know, it's, it's good enough. Is that right? It's good enough for Is the that UK. Right? That's, that's the policy in the UK. Okay. And of course, for engineers and people who have special skills, there is the... Oh, oh you, you change your mind no, for you, engineers. You're, you're, you're just, you're, you're not keeping up. This has been our program since the beginning. If you, if you would do your reading, you would know that reading. from the beginning, we say, le, le programme des talents internationaux, international talents program, provides for special skilled people, engineers and others, to come here for a few years without speaking French, and we want, once they're here, to make them, if they want to go higher in the hierarchy, they learn French, and that's fine. So you just know so little about immigration. Oh, okay. I okay, can't let's believe let, uh, Mr. that you make that, that your, your first and foremost yeah. issue. Mr. I think our position is clear. What we say is that we better receive 40,000, have a better integration, don't lose 26%. And the only thing we say, like we have in many European countries have a test of French and a test of values in the first three years. It's reasonable. It's done in other countries. They so why don't expel is them. Mr. Lise and Mr. Cuyard them. saying that okay. it's scandalous? We're almost, we're out of, we have that in Europe. They we're don't almost, expel we're them almost out of time. They just don't become we're citizens. They still landed immigrants. That's we're that's exactly we're almost out of time on this particular topic. No, you topic. want yeah. to expel no. them. What, Come what on. I'm going to do now, Mr. Lise. You know it's not right. Mr. Lise. Can I, can I say a no, word? Uh, well, a quiet word. I didn't mean to say no to a, you a like quiet that. Word, but, a quiet word. Okay, we have, uh, we have very little time left. I have one very short question on this topic. I would like a yes or no answer from each one of you. We're going to start in the same order that we did the mm -hmm. uh, initial questions. Mr. Cuillard, if elected, will you set up an inquiry into systemic racism in Quebec, yes or no? No, because we asked the people. Okay, and they didn't, this must I, say come yes on, or no. Come on, I need no. to explain Would that, Matsumi. I cannot just no, say no No, we're just for going this. for a yes or no answer. I'm because sorry. It's a complex issue. We, you just yes, cannot it is. answer by yes, yes it or is, no. and I that agree. Sense. If I understand why... Okay, why, if, if you form a government, yep. will you set up a systemic, uh, an inquiry into systemic racism in Quebec, yes or no? Of Very yes, quickly. Yes. yes. Okay. Mr. Lise, yes or no? We will act swiftly against discrimination, so we don't need another inquiry. Okay. We have Ms. seven that would be in the last a no, 10 then. years. Monsieur Legault. There's racism in Quebec, but no systematic racism. So that your answer so would no. be no, then. No. Okay, thank you very much. All right, we're going to move on to the environment now. More and more Quebecers are recycling and composting, but sometimes it feels like a lost cause, doesn't it? We still dump nearly half the waste we produce into landfills. From Montreal, here's Rebecca McDonald, along with her daughter, Rosalind, 
with her question about the environment. As a new mom and a teacher, I try and do my best to reduce waste by reusing paper and getting cloth diapers, as well as shopping at stores that let me bring my own containers. I would like to know what your party will do to implement uh, sustainable waste management and what you will do to encourage consumers and manufacturers to reduce their waste. Rebecca, thank you very much for your question. Each of you will get one minute to respond and we begin with Jean-Francois Lisée. Well, Ms. McDonald, uh, I want your uh, daughter to uh, grow up in one of the places that uh, will be a model for recycling, for a circular economy, and for the fight against the climate crisis we are in. Uh, uh, we see that uh, the way that the recycling uh, operation has been set up in Quebec is not good enough. And it's not good enough that the Chinese don't want to take our stuff anymore. That says something. And I think we see that some of the recycling uh, operations uh, have a, a, a better way of doing it that makes the products really reusable. Others do not. So we need to reform that. But it's only a very small piece of a larger green shift plan that we have proposed. And I, I wish we can discuss this further. We want to get out of the old business contrary to the Liberals and the CAC. Thank you, Mr. Lise. Mr. Legault? Yeah, I've got two sons of 24, 25 years old. They show me every day how to better recycle. The problem we have in Quebec is that it's very different from one city to the other. Some cities have ways to recycle. They have special uh, places where you can put uh, the rest of your meal, you can put your paper. But some other cities, they don't supply these uh, services. So I think the Quebec government has to show more leadership and make sure that everywhere in Quebec that we have this transition and recycle more. We also need to make sure that we have companies who are able to do things with glasses. With Right now we have a problem. China doesn't, don't want to receive any more some of our papers. So we need to make sure that People do their job, but that there are also companies who can recycle what we supply them. Thank you. Ms. Marseille. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your question. Um, of course, here in Quebec, the problem is not really the recycling. It's the recuperation. We don't have a lot of, of companies who have their... Re recycling, you know, it's, it's really two things. And I think this is one way to fight against, against uh, climate change. But we need to take a leap right now because we're go going in a wall. And let's say, because we said in Quebec, at, at Quebec Solidaire that we'll take 2.5 billion to plan uh, the transition, and this guy laughed. And let, I want to let you know, ma'am, that for us, ecological debt is more important. Thank you. Mr. Quia. Yes, uh, environment, of course, includes climate change, and I hope we have time to discuss climate change in our debate uh, shortly. Yes, recycling is a huge issue, particularly because of the China situation. If you drive around uh, along uh, Highway 40, you see big piles of paper there that are just waiting to be sent somewhere to be recycled. And we have companies in Quebec who do this, and also companies that transform what we leave behind into energy. There's one company called Enerchem. Uh, my colleagues probably know about this company, uh, that transforms what we throw away in, into natural gas. Not natural gas from fossil, fossil origin, but from what we, again, put in our garbage. That's the way of the future. First, recycling better, tri triaging better, but also transforming refuse into energy. That's also the way to go. But again, plastic comes to my mind. We have to discuss that. And again, climate change is one of the most fundamental challenges of our time. And we need to address that together in a very solid way. Thank you, Mr. Cuillard. And of course, you all did mention climate change. So we are going to take a deep dive into that now. The reality is the effects of climate change are here right now. Now, Quebecers felt it actually over the summer, of course, that relentless heat wave contributed to the deaths of dozens of people. So 
What would you do right now to tackle climate change? Mr. Lise. Well, one thing we should do is to make sure that uh, the next heat wave uh, is not as costly in lives as the last one. That's why we put aside $100 million to uh, put climatization in nursing homes all across Quebec before next summer. That's something that is urgent. Uh, we need to be far-reaching and pragmatic. Our proposals for more public transit, but also for uh, car sharing and carpooling would take out of rush hour in Montreal 300,000 cars. That would reduce our emissions tremendously and that would save us $30 billion worth of gas over the next seven years that we can reinvest in Quebec. One thing I, I was very uh, worried about, Mr. Couillard, is when we made the proposal to give a leg up to school buses, electric school buses that we build in Quebec, instead of giving subsidies to diesel fuel uh, buses that are built in the United States, you refused to give an advantage to the electric buses rather than, than diesel. What is the diesel lobby that prevented you from giving an advantage to electric I buses? I don't know any diesel lobby, but I know this company, Lyon, Lion. That's a tremendous company. We help them a lot. Actually, I was on Times Square with them showing their electric bus to the Americans. Yeah, they sell more they're in the achieving, US than They're Quebec. achieving significant success. Now, coming back to climate change, everybody well, recognizes... You're not the question. Everybody recognizes... Why didn't you give a, a, can an I answer? edge? Everybody, didn't answer. everybody recognizes Quebec's leadership in the fight against climate change. Yeah, we need to do more. But we gathered the premiers of Canada in 2015. We supported uh, the Green Fund through the carbon market with California, which is still very active and working well. With the money out of this, we support initiatives like today, helping people to buy electric cars, helping people to get uh, electric school buses, uh, fighting against coastal erosion. That's what we are doing, and that's what we will continue doing. Mr. Legault. Yeah. Those two parties, PQ and Liberal Party, they don't have any lessons to give to Quebecers because those two parties invested 400 million in a cement factory in Gaspésia. It created 200 jobs, so it's $2 million per job, and it represents gases of 500,000 cars. They did that to buy votes in Gaspésia, both of them. That's what you don't need to do. You have to invest in transport, uh, uh, transit. You have to do things with the St. Lawrence. I've wrote a book about it. You have to modernize our water uh, uh, purification. We have to not do what PQ and the Liberal Party did in Gaspésia to buy votes. I want to get back to you, Mr. Quial, but first I want to give mm. Madame Massé time to respond. Sure. Thank you. I'm very surprised because you're right. They did that, yeah. but you also have no money in your financial uh, budget to support the, the necessary transition. That's right. When I say we need to take the leap right now, that means we need to put money in this transition. And you, I, and you don't have money in your plan, and also, if I'm right, you don't have any except about REM and the REM, uh, and maybe you support uh, in Quebec City. Quebec City. After that, you have nothing. Get snow. And, and, and you know what? It's so important. I mean, the, the difficulties that uh, climate change bring to our citizens and all over planets, it's so important. And you still say we can pick the fuel in Quebec soil, you say that, mm -hmm. and, uh, Ms. and the PLQ said that it could be possible with the, oh yeah, of course, I saw the reglement, and, uh, and then how could you say they make a mistake with Parc Cartier? And oh, with Gaspésia, with the, uh, cement, with the Gaspésia. cement factory. We were against. Okay. We were the only one. Now, I, now anyway, I'd like to, yeah, I would like to give Mr. Quial yeah. the opportunity to respond to... Well, we're happy for, to help uh, the Gaspésie uh, citizens to get good-paying jobs. You always talk about good-paying jobs, and here you are, denying, million, uh, denying access to wind power and a cement factory for people that really need good jobs. Now, this cement factory is going to be participating in the carbon market, obviously. It will be. But you, Monsieur Legault, 
yeah. were a very, very active uh, friend of the idea of uh, taking oil out of Anticosti Island and really, literally, I must say, the PQ started all of this, literally destroying this island, which is a gem in the Gulf of St. Lawrence, mm -hmm. which will now be presented for a UNESCO uh, heritage, uh, World Heritage uh, Sites. Nah. You know, we only, have two, we only have two minutes power. and 20 seconds left on this topic, and I'd really like to get a sense of what your visions are on the environment for the future. We're going to go around really quickly. I'm going to start at this end because, look, we had hydroelectricity, which was a revolution in Quebec. What is your plan for the future in 20 seconds and I must say, very, very good. Yeah, let's say that we'll take the money from the Fonds des Générations because we think that the, the climate debt is the most important and we'll become a leader in the production of battery because we will uh, create a public corporation for lithium mines and a lot of other things. Okay, Mr. Lisey. We'll make a massive transition to electricity in, uh, in our buses, in our in, in electric cars that will support car sharing that is electric. We will support the fact that big trucks that come to Montreal stop in hubs in the suburb and then smaller electric vans will do the delivery. And this, these are the, the total amount of all that we propose will put us back on track for our targets for uh, 2030, which uh, went off the rails under the Liberals. Mr. Legault. If I become Premier of Quebec, I'll work personally to increase hydroelectricity exports in order to replace coal and gas plants in the United States. Mr. Couillard thinks that hydroelectricity is something of the past. I think it's something of the future. And I think the largest contribution Quebec can do to fight, to help fight climate change, is to replace those gas and coal plants in the United States with clean energy. Mr. Cuillard. One has to understand better what the energy market is in 2018. I'm not sure, Monsieur Legault, that you do understand this. You're what I know is that since 2014, uh, hydroelectricity exports in Quebec have grown by 35%, 35%. And we are just witnessing soon the start of a historic contract with Massachusetts worth $10 billion. And right now, Hydro-Quebec is bidding in Connecticut. So to say that we don't want to export hydroelectricity is ludicrous. But we need to keep putting a price on carbon and fight climate change. We need to keep electrifying our transport and supporting public transit. Thank you, we, will, we will give Thank free you. public transit to full Thank you, Mr. Quia. Thank you very much. And that ends this theme. There are 600,000 Quebecers whose mother tongue is English. Twice that number, speak English at home for most of the time. <coughs> the community is part of Quebec and its history. This province is home. Our last theme is about relations with English-speaking Quebecers. Our question comes from Edward Lai of Montreal. English-speaking Quebecers, as well as Quebecers belonging to a visible minority, have long been underrepresented in the provincial public service, as well as paragovernmental organizations. While various parties have acknowledged this issue, there has not been much progress. What concrete measures will your party take to ensure that, once and for all, the workforce of these institutions truly reflects the diversity of Quebec society? Mr. Cuillard, we start with you. You have a minute. I agree. We must do more, and we are doing more. I told earlier the history of this uh, encounter I had with people in New Carlisle, which really convinced me that we needed to put the Secretariat in place and have a minister with money. So there's a $25 million budget attached to it, and I hope my colleagues would commit themselves to keeping the Secretariat and the funding. What we're doing with this is, for example, supporting partnerships with Concordia at McGill to increase employment opportunities for young English-speaking Quebecers, who, by the way, are at home in Quebec, and we need them to stay, and we want them to stay. We also have another partnership with uh, McGill and also with the public sector, because we need and we want to hire more young English-speaking citizens in our public service. We have funds allocated to this, and we will work hard in order to succeed that. Thank you very much, Mr. Cuillard. Ms. Massé? Yeah. Um, for Quebec Soldat, it's important the, the role that the state has to play in uh, employ people, in employing people. Um, so for Quebec Soldat, uh, we will apply, because for now it's not the reality, we will apply strict quotas, really strict one, to hire 25% of people from visible minorities, including people 
uh, minorities, uh, English minorities, in the public service, because we have to reach a representation of 13%, this is very important. And let's say that, of course, the Secretariat will stay with us because I think we, you have, um, you have uh, English minority uh, historic rights and we want to respect it. Thank you very much, Ms. Massey. Mr. Legault? Yeah. Anglophones are part of Quebec history. And I recognize that Anglophone community has played a huge role in building our Quebec society. They have built important institutions, like the Jewish hospital is a model. We can see a doctor within 90 minutes at the ER of the Jewish hospital. Mr. Cuyau thinks it's impossible to do that somewhere else. McGill, McGill is one of the best university in the world. And you know what Mr. Barrett did? He did centralized decision regarding McGill University Mr. Legault, and all I, board I members resigned because of Mr. Mr. Uh, I think Mr. Lai deserves an answer. Yeah. He'd like to know how you're going to make the public service more diverse. Yeah, what I want is to make sure that there's respect. Mr. Barrett didn't respect institutions. That's why all board members resigned. We have to respect education institutions, okay. Thank you very much, Mr. hospital Le Legault. Mr. Lise? Well, I will respect uh, Mr. Edward Lyon's question. And he has a very good question. And I think it goes to the lack, the very dismal track record of 15 years of liberal government that couldn't deliver on a simple thing. Have Anglos being part of the public service at a proportionate number. You, you said 13% of diversity plus uh, audible minorities. You're right, it's from 13 to 16% when we include them all. It is our commitment to do much, much better than the Liberals in Hydro-Quebec, in the SLQ, in the government itself. In our bill that we, that Mr. Couillard didn't call, we asked for 16% of nominations from the diversity, including Anglos, in all the boards that the government sets up. But more importantly, one of the reasons why uh, it's so difficult to reach these targets is first, it's not <coughs> ingrained in the administrative culture, and secondly, some of the diplomas do not provide sufficient okay, thank French. you very much, Mr. Lise. Let's be clear. The English community recognizes that French is the official language of Quebec. But despite the gestures of goodwill and the reassurances, many English-speaking Quebecers say they feel like second-class citizens here. This was reinforced when the National Assembly unanimously voted to denounce the Bonjour High greeting in stores. So what will you do to convince English-speaking Quebecers that they are valued and that they can prosper here in Quebec? Mr. Criard, we start with you. Well, I'll start by saying, and I hope all my colleagues will stay, say the same. You're right. Obviously, French is the official language in Quebec. But English is not a foreign language in Quebec. English-speaking Quebecers, not Anglophones, I'd rather say it's not something, a criticism, and just saying that we should maybe talk about English-speaking Quebecers more positively instead of saying Anglos, say English-speaking Quebecers. So we also want to say that this incident happened. It's behind us. Let's move forward. As I said earlier, we have put significant initiatives in place. I think nobody doubts our will to uh, go forward and give all the, the, place, uh, the place that it deserves to the English-speaking uh, citizens of Quebec. But again, I will repeat this, and I challenge my colleagues to say the same. French is the official language in Quebec. English is not a foreign language in Quebec. I can do that. Good. French is our official and common language. Mm -hmm. And English is a Quebec language, as are the languages of the First Nations. Same level. For citizens, yes. But what you equivocate always by making believe that we're in a bilingual uh, province. English is not an official and common language. French is. And in this, this bonjour high controversy, I don't like the fact that you say condemn. We didn't condemn. We say... We denounced. We didn't denou denounce. Thanks for the correction. We didn't denounce at all. We said since French is our common language, we uh, respectfully invite uh, pro the service providers to use the word bonjour. Okay, we, I, I think, you know, I just, just to finish, I think it is consistent with the fact that French is our 
common language. And I would have believed that after a unanimous decision, there would be some, uh, some further invitation. But Mr. Okay, Fouya was so ashamed Ligo of that, so ashamed of that, that he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. That's Let's, let's give Mr. Legault a chance to speak on yeah. this. Everybody is free to choose bonjour or I. I would like to use that we use bonjour. The word is universal, understood by all. And for me, it's a symbol to show that Quebec is different in North America. But I want to be very clear. People are free to choose. It's a personal choice, not a choice for the state. OK, but That's I want right. to get away from the bonjour high so much as the whole idea that English-speaking Quebecers feel like they're second-class citizens here. Just the fact that there is so much debate over whether there should be an English debate. Yes. We'd like to know what will you do to make English-speaking communities feel valued here? Ms. Massé. Just uh, sit with them, talk with them, give them the, the opportunity to tell what their story is, you know? The most important, I think, it's people told me that on the street, it's they, they find that we don't listen to them. I mean, as politicians, we, we're not listening to them. And I think this is very uh, important to, to let them know. And uh, not only the one in Montreal, there's a lot of Quebecers, uh, English speaking, all around Quebec. I've met some, as I said, in, in Gaspésie, and, and they were very uh, isolated. So please, just go and get and meet And would anybody other. else like to sure, discuss the, sure. the, the whole idea of second-class citizenship in Quebec? Gestures are important. So when I, w I was the first cabinet minister uh, with the, uh, the portfolio of the English community, I could not believe when the Liberals came in and did not follow this precedent. I, could, I stood with the English community when the Liberals wanted to scrap the school boards and took away control from the hospitals. Those are gestures. We were there to fight for institutions and rights, and that's the good fight. The Liberals, okay. I, 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 I really love the quote okay, from like the give... commissioner of the English school board that says, oh, you changed your mind because there's an election coming. That's not sincerity. Okay. No. Mr. Yeah, I want to say that I want to be clear. A CAQ government will respect Anglophones' right to be served in English for education, for health care. More than that, I did it when I was Minister of Education and Minister of Health. We have to respect, we have to listen to proposals that are done by Anglophone institutions in order to build a policy for all Quebecers. So it's a question of listening, and that's what I'll do. Well, unfortunately, uh, Monsieur Legault wants to abolish school boards. That's right. Uh -huh. So it doesn't hold. It doesn't. Again, it doesn't Can work. Can I answer that? You cannot say on one side of the mouth, "I want to respect English-speaking Quebecers," and with the other side of the mouth, which Monsieur Legault does a few times a week these days, well, I want to get rid of their school boards. And uh, as we heard, That's this is critically important for English-speaking Quebecers, as are hospitals. This is also why we kept control from the community with these hospitals. And that's still the true. case today. Okay, so Mr. Legault, would you like to respond to yeah. the school board? We have nine Anglophone school boards. We will replace them by nine Anglophone service centers. <laughs> what we want is to stop <laughs> spending $20 million for election where less than 20% vote. So what we'll want to do is to have parents at the different school decide who will be the representative on the service center. We want to decentralize. Right now, it's too much centralized on school boards. We, want to we have to, that. to decentralize to parents and to teachers in each school. They are okay, the very best. Quickly. What so would you like choose to say to the that? best so means. It, it is confirmed. Monsieur Legault wants to abolish school boards. And I Replace think all, all English-speaking Quebecers know this very well now. <laughs> and one of the reasons we stayed with That's the school right. boards, on top of their historical importance, is democracy. People have fought and died for democracy. And even if not that many people go out to vote, it's very precious for a society, and you should be extremely careful 
before going backwards on democracy, okay. which is true, by the way, for English-speaking okay. and French-speaking. Mr. Well, th this is, Mr. This is Kuyal, new. three this years ago, new. I'm sorry. Mr. This is Kuyal, new because for the first two years, you wanted to abolish elections of school well, boards. Well, exactly so. For the three first years, years ago, you, you agreed to abolish it. But we didn't do it. You changed your mind. No, we didn't do it. But you changed your mind. You were as disrespectful. What will be your position next day? You wanted to abolish. You're the one talking to me about positions changing every day these days? You wanted to abolish the elections of school boards three years ago. We didn't do it. You do, we didn't do it out of respect. Okay, we thank you very much. We never did. Neither okay, thank you very much. We're going to end this. We're going to abolish them in Mr. the past Mr. or in the future. We're going to end this. <laughs> We're going to end this with one final question for all of you. We'd again like an, a yes or no answer. Okay. If you are elected, will you maintain the English Secretariat? Mr. Cuillard, we start with you. Obviously, yes. Ms. Massé. Yes. Mr. Legault. Yes. Mr. Lise. Absolutely. We have consensus. Good. What a wonderful Good. way to end this debate. Good. Thank you very much to all of you. Good. OK, so that does bring us to the end of our questions and our debates. We're going to ask each candidate now to make a closing statement. You've got 45 seconds each. Mr. Cuillard, you get to begin. With two weeks to go, the choices facing Quebecers are clear. Build on what we have accomplished or watch it fall apart. Welcome talent or close ourselves off work together, not against each other. Our values and our policies are consistent. They do not change as the wind blows. A liberal-led government will continue to balance the books while investing in the health, education, and the environment. We will continue to promote the French language while building an inclusive Quebec. We will continue to stand up for the interest, interests of Quebec in Ottawa and Washington while striving to work collaboratively with our neighbors. Let's build on what we have accomplished together. Let's move forward instead of backwards. Your vote does matter. Thank you very much, Mr. Cuillard. Mr. Legault. The debate tonight has made things clear. On the one side, the same old parties, same old debates with Mr. Lise, Mr. Cuillard. On the other side, a call for change. I have great ambitions for Quebec. I'm asking tonight for your support. Your contribution is vital to get Quebec moving forward. Let's build a richer Quebec together with lower tax rates, better school, quicker access to health care, a Quebec that helps families and takes care of its seniors with dignity. On October the 1st, I'm asking you to end 15 years of liberal rule and to elect a government that works for you. Real change starts now. Thank you, Mr. Thank Legault. Jean-François Lisée. I was the first leader to agree to this debate because I wanted to speak to you directly beyond stereotypes and say how the PQ offers good, green, progressive government. I want to close on the climate crisis. Will Quebec still be in the oil business after October 1st? Well, if the Liberals or the CAC win, yes. With the PQ, no. We are commit committed to reducing emissions by, uh, with more public transit, yes, but also by paying you $8 a day to carpool and by providing a $100 subscription refund for a car sharing service. No more diesel guzzling school buses with us. Our green program will reduce our emissions by 25% in seven years, because in French or, Eng or in English, this is the only planet we Thank have. Thank you very much, Mr. Lise. Ms. Massé. Thank you for your listening and your questions. We can disagree maybe on many things, but we need to work together to stop the climate crisis. It's the single most important issue on this election. On October 1st, I ask you to stand with me and give me, give us the mandate to protect our land, our water, and our people. Everybody knows it's now or never. You have been taken for granted for too long now. Quebec Soldat is different. I will be a premier that works for the many and not for the few. Thank you, Madame Massé. And thank all of you for debating in English. It is your second language. I know it's no easy task, and I want to let you all know that we really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you to you.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes for you tonight's to Quebec Debate 2018. If you have any questions in your mind about some of the things you heard the leaders say, a team of fact checkers has been looking into some of those stats they threw around. And you can see their work on any of the English local media sites a little bit later tonight. Uh, we want to thank all our viewers, of course, and our listeners who submitted questions. And we really want to reiterate our thanks to the leaders for taking part in this historic first ever English debate on television in Quebec. All right, that's it for us now. The decision is up to you. Please go out and vote on October the 1st and make your choice. Take care, everyone. Good afternoon. Hello, good evening, and uh, welcome to a special edition of Home Run. We are here to analyze the debate that you just heard, the first one in the English language. And a big welcome to our listeners in Ottawa and the Utah Way and across our Quebec listening area. My name is Sue Smith. I'm the host of the afternoon show here in Montreal. And uh, along with Nancy Wood and uh, Jonathan Montpetit, hello Hi. to both of you. Hi, Nancy. Uh, we are going to try to bring some sense into uh, what you just heard. Uh, our text line is open if you want to text us at 514-566-9066. Uh, you can text us at 514-966-9066. And we'll have lots of reaction from all kinds of people. Uh, let's start with you, Nancy. Hello. Where to start? Well, yeah. I thought it was an you know, overall an interesting, lively debate. I think that what is true often when you're in your second language, you lose a little bit of the subtlety. You're a little more blunt, which actually makes for a better debate yeah. because you can you do a little less skating, a little more just sticking to the facts. I thought it was a lot more interesting and, yeah. and lively, that's for sure. And I think people, you know, Deborah was just saying they we do appreciate them doing the debate and really looking online. I saw that too from people who are following it on Facebook or on TV. They really did appreciate the fact that they did it in their second language. And you just uh, reminded me, I should remind our listeners that we are actually streaming live right now on Facebook. If you want to uh, watch us in studio, it's pretty exciting in here. Uh, you can check us out on Facebook at CBC Montreal. Jonathan, what were your thoughts? I know, like Nancy, it's like, where to start? Well, yeah, where to start, but it, I mean, I think it was a, it was a good debate. I think it really showcased that there are options. You know, the, there there are very um, significant policy differences that these different parties have. You have two parties kind of leaning towards the center right, two parties leaning towards the center left. Um, I thought uh, Jean Francois Lise again, like he was in the in the first debate, had another strong debate tonight. And I think what he did was he made a very uh, convincing case for the Parti Québécois as not only a sovereigntist party but as a social democratic party, that if you are somebody looking uh, for a progressive option, uh, the, the Parti Québécois can be that option. So let me just ask you something, because I had to smile right at the beginning, and I always think, of course, Jean-François Lisée, we know how like, smart he is, and he's yeah. very wily, yeah. right? But the fact that he started with sovereignty and brought up René Lévesque, I thought was super interesting. I what did you make was, of that, Nancy? I thought it was proactive, right? Like, he's not going to wait for somebody to say, you know, the PQ is saying there will be no referendum. Don't forget that this is the party that drove Sun Life away and, you know, created this crisis. And René Lévesque, he just went out and owned it. And not only that, he also mentioned his the speech, a very well known speech that he wrote for Lucien Bouchard, uh, uh, given at the Centaur Theater, where you know it was about being able to access healthcare services in English. <laughs> yeah, you don't need a language test; you need a blood test. Exactly, yeah, and yeah. even even <laughs> Philip Couillard had to point out it was a good speech. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there were definitely moments that they all agreed, and right there at the very end, they agreed uh, about the English Secretariat. I want to kind of jump ahead to that because you know our time is a little bit limited here, um, and I just want 
want to make sure that we get to that because right before the show, I spoke to uh, Graham Chambers, who's the president of um, the Quebec English Language Network, excuse me, <clears throat> and um, he was saying that basically they were looking for three things. The secretary at one of them, um, access to services and school boards are the other. So what did you hear in there, Nancy, that you thought would uh, really resonate with with English speakers? Well, uh, I was a little unclear about where th- what, what they were saying about school boards. So maybe, Jonathan, you were clear about it. I mean, we have, François Legault has been on record as saying he doesn't think we need school boards. And I think he was just talking about, you know, that's an extra layer of bureaucracy. Then people pointed out they're constitutionally protected. They're very important for the English community. Mm-hmm. And he was accused of wanting to get rid of them tonight, but he didn't really, you know, he didn't say, no, no, we're never getting rid of them or that I really value them. What did you get from that? Did you... it, he, I think he has trouble getting across what exactly will replace the school boards. Yeah. Uh, the the plan, I think, for the for the CAQ is that these kind of resource centers uh, will, will replace school boards that will um, not dictate to schools that uh, the, the whole idea of, for the CAQ is that schools would have more autonomy. But tonight we're hearing that uh, that these these service centers or, or, or whatever he's calling them, they would have some kind of elected, uh, elected representatives. There would be some Sound- Kind of, very much like a school board. Exactly. Yeah, so so <laughs> I think that's something that I think a lot of English people, English speakers in, in the province will kind of want a bit more clarification on what is the difference between a school board, uh, you know, and so why are you proposing to get rid of school boards if these things would effectively do most exactly, of what school yeah, boards mm-hmm, do? Yeah. I thought none of the leaders really did a very good job in answering the question about access to English services and making sure that the English community stays and worked. I mean, Legault obviously had his 26% of immigrants leaving the province, which he definitely hammered away at. Um, I mean, how well do you thought they answered that, and, and how does that go sort of with their platforms? Nancy? Well, I mean, I thought uh, Couillard, you know, had the easiest response, saying that he was in, uh, I think it was in Chandler, and he was hearing from people, and that's how he realized he needed to create the secretariat. So it was him, for him, it was an easier thing. And I'm not sure if it was more about healthcare or in general, Manon Massé saying it, we have to listen to people. But you're right, there, there weren't a lot of guarantees that we're going to make sure. I think one, uh, wasn't Lise who said, well, we'll have CLSCs open? It's like, well... Mm-hmm. Are they going to have English personnel 24-7? I mean, I don't think that's realistic. Yeah, and it's also not clear about the secretariat, although uh, in exactly how they will facilitate the sort of yeah. access to services. I mean, that's something we've heard from the English community for a long time. Well, and I think it's it's interesting to, to identify this... Um kind of hesitation to say too much about uh, services in English. It's something that Nancy and I were discussing earlier today, that all these party leaders have to kind of be careful about what they say in the English debate. They can't overpromise things uh, in English that they, you know, at the expense of um, angering their, their Absolutely. francophone base. And, base. Um, you know, because, you know, yes, this debate was in English, but uh, you can be darn sure that uh, every French journalist in the province was listening quite closely to what was being said here. Yeah. All right. I just want to uh, read a, a text that came in. I consider myself a new Quebecer, says the texter. I've moved here for my son, who's bilingual, thanks to francophone schools in Alberta and BC. My French is improving, but government funded French classes do not provide funding for Canadian citizens. We do not regret moving here, but are disappointed there are no supports here for us to improve. Prove our French. So, sort of along that theme, um, I just wanted to um, reintroduce my guests here, Nancy Wood and Jonathan Montpetit. They'll be with us for the half hour. You can continue to text. I did want to correct myself. Uh, poor Jeffrey Chambers. I have misidentified him every time I talked about it. Jeffrey, if you're listening, I apologize. He is the president of the Quebec Community Groups Network, and his name is Jeffrey. Uh, sorry about that. Um, but uh, while we're talking about English uh, services, Malcolm Lewis Rich- Richmond is the president of Youth for Youth Quebec, and he has been watching. Uh, the debate closely and he joins me in studio hello Malcolm hi Sue thanks for having me it's a pleasure thank you for coming in so overall impression well it was um, quite a good debate I I remember we we saw Jack Jadwab this morning saying that he thought the leaders would be cautious I'm glad that the leaders made uh, clear proposals and they weren't speaking in too vague terms and um, and unfortunately we had um, they're all experienced politicians, so they've all been in the House for a long time and uh, were able to to, to cri- tr- critique what their colleagues were saying. Yeah. Anything that resonated for you particularly as an Anglo youth? Anything that stood out for you? Well, definitely. I mean, my two colleagues at Youth Free Quebec, Adrian and Edward, asked questions, and, and when... Um, uh, Edward asked the question about representation uh, for English, the English-speaking community in the civil service. That resonated hard because mm-hmm. right now we have about one percent of uh, 
of uh, the English speaking community in the civil service of Anglophones hired, and that's that's to we're totally underrepresented. So when young people look at what their job prospects are, and if they if they want to. Uh, hold a prominent position in Quebec, we need to be adequately represented. Uh, well, for sure, that is a problem that has been identified, and we've been talking about that as well. Did you hear anything, though, that would solve that problem? Well, with the new secretariat that we have, the Secretariat for Relations with the English-speaking community, uh, that's, a, that's a great mechanism to, to ensure that uh, all the that the English speaking community's voice is heard, and I'm glad all the parties committed to keeping that. Um, I think uh, the proposals that uh, were made to bring in more visible minorities into this into the civil service um, will will tie into that question because yeah. a lot of the English speaking the, the, community. It was are, quotas actually. Twenty five percent, Manon Man Massé was suggesting from Quebec Solidaire. Yeah. What about the uh, suggestions from the uh, Parti Québécois about um, anonymous resumes? Um, he, he, they called it something else, but you know, sort of uh, colorblind and anonymous resumes when you apply for jobs at the SAQ or Hydro Quebec or those kinds of things. They seem like uh, interesting measures, and if and if they're used in places like Ontario and uh, otherwise, if if they work, then and if they can get more uh, visible minorities. And, and language minority communities uh, hired too, then, then why not? My guest is Malcolm Lewis Richmond. He is the president of Youth for Youth Quebec. Thank you so much for coming in. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot. So uh, we're just talking about the debate and a big welcome to our listeners across uh, the province of Quebec. I wanted to play a little bit of tape from uh, the debate. I wanted to get to this accountant clip, which is my personal favorite moment of the evening, and it came quite early on. Can we uh, tee that up? Can we get that up for us? Uh, and that is the first clip that we've got on our list there. Um, and I thought it was uh, pr pretty interested, uh, pretty interesting in setting the tone. Let's hear it. So you, you vastly <laughs> underestimated the cost in your uh, financial not statement by half. <coughs> at least. By half, not at all. At least. least. Yes, you did. It's a rough draft. It's I'm a, a statement. Uh, by the way, you're a doctor. I'm a chartered accountant. Well, let me tell I, th you. I think I know the numbers well, better than you Mr. Legault, if my yeah. accountant had given me the statement, I would have yeah. fired him. <laughs> okay. Nancy, what are your thoughts on that? Well, they're that? talking there about uh, how to get the dropout rate down, how to get more four-year-olds in school, whether or not you do it with daycares and or pre-K for all four-year-olds. And uh, Philippe Couillard was saying, you can't possibly do it in one mandate. You you know, you haven't put the money aside and it's not doable. We're going to do it in CPE, CPEs. And Legault was saying, you can't, well, if you can't do it in, you know, how are you going to build the spaces for them? But it was, I mean, I've heard those... Almost the same thing in French, where, you know, Legault tries to paint himself. He says, I don't tell him how to do brain surgery. Yes. And he shouldn't tell me how to do accountancy. Yes. But it was a very effective moment. Uh, but this is all, Jonathan, you and I have talked about over the fight about who's going to be the premier of the economy. Yeah. And, I mean, it's interesting because uh, Francois Legault's uh, estimates for how much that will cost, I think it's something like getting 50,000 kids into kindergarten schools. Uh, there's a space shortage at the moment in schools. Uh, there's a um, personnel shortage at that same time. Um, and the criticism that uh, Philip Couillard was presenting there is that Francois Legault hadn't accurately estimated the cost of that of his proposal and he's kind of lowballed uh, that cost and it speaks to I think something that economists and other uh, policy analysts have pointed out that not only uh, the CAQ's financial plan has some gaps in it but so too does the the Liberal parties both of them kind of uh, offer very uh, optimistic estimates for economic growth in order to balance in order to kind of make it all balanced and so um, but you know this is I think an, an important uh, an important exchange for Couillard because it really puts um, it really kind of puts the the scrutiny on to uh, Legault and whether or not or how we can kind of pay for this very ambitious promise to back up his numbers and I have to say Legault was throwing numbers around like crazy tonight and it'll be interesting um, um, to see we'll have of course we've got the fact checking uh, desk looking at those so it'll be interesting to check those anything else on that Nancy well I just wanted to going back a couple of minutes we were hearing about the quotas for the civil service mm -hmm. and Manuel Massé saying you know having this very concrete plan to have 25 percent of all new hires be either visible or audible minorities, as mm -hmm. was mentioned. Yes, you know, English, we were in there, yeah. And I saw that a lot of the things she was saying really resonated. I was watching on Facebook to see what people were commenting. And I think that people like her policies. And I don't know whether we have time to get into debate. People were saying it's too bad Quebec Solidaire is sovereigntist, uh, that, but they like her policies. And there were also a lot of comments about her physical appearance. 
Which really? is funny because Manon Massey does have a particular physical appearance. Mm-hmm. She does not try to follow, you know, what women in politics, a lot of women feel forced to do, very polished and everything. And this is old news in French Quebec. You know, people got over her appearance in the last election. And I saw a lot of Anglophones saying she looks like a man oh, or what's with her. Yeah, mm-hmm. but puzzled. Some derogatory, but a lot of puzzlement. And I think, well, at least they got to know her better and they got to hear what she had to say. Jonathan, what did you think? My, my own two cents is um, I, I kind of gave her a, a low score uh, for her performance in the, in the French language debate. And I think I was uh, probably overly harsh uh, in that. But I thought she performed very well so uh, in, in the English language debate. Uh, you know, clearly she doesn't speak English with as much facility as some of the other leaders did. But she, I think, did a very effective job of getting her point across. She didn't let her uh, herself get, get spoken over. Uh, she wasn't quiet for, for kind of the, the same long periods that we saw her quiet to for. To be fair, during... I thought the moderators did a very good job of bringing her in because it was m- less her taking her space and more... I think she still um, had less time, though. When I, I was yeah, looking, I she right, did. Yeah. We had these interesting... Jean-François Lisée had way yeah, more. But we're, now we have that live, real-time clock to see how long the leaders are speaking. And she said in the French debate, at some point it was just cacophony, and she realized, I'm just going to I don't want to contribute to the cacophony. It did happen a little bit tonight again. And she had a very, a very, you know, good one-liner at one point when it kind of descended into that kind of tumult. Uh, You know, they had kind of the all the men in the room had kind of (laughs) gone off talking about God knows what. Uh, (laughs) And she comes back, you know, comes to her and says, "I think we were talking about education." Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and she answered the question. That she answered the question, I think, and I think those, you know, she might not speak as much, but I think she she chooses her her moments much more uh, decisively than than the others. All right. Well, speaking of asking questions. Uh, throughout the debate, we heard from citizens in Quebec, which included Adrienne Winrow. She asked a question about what the leaders would do to encourage Anglophone students to remain in Quebec. Let's hear the question and let's uh, get her response. I went through the English public school system. I'm happy I got a job in Quebec, but it took one year of French university for me to be truly comfortable enough in French to seek employment here. Uh, Many of my fellow students left for Ontario because they did not feel comfortable enough with their level of French. My question is, what can be done at the public school system level to equip and encourage Anglophone youth to look for employment in Quebec upon graduation? Uh, That is Adrienne Winrow, one of the people that was asking a question, which I thought was an excellent question, Adrienne, and uh, she joins us in studio. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming in. So what did you make of the responses to that question? Um, first, I'll say that I was pleasantly surprised that perhaps the um, the conversation shifted in tenor from um, what I, I think is being done currently in, in the English Montreal School Board, um, uh, of which my son is a participant. My son just entered kindergarten in English Montreal School Board, so I'm particularly interested at this moment. Um, there is some patting ourselves on the back about the fact that we have a very high graduation rate in, mm-hmm. in relation to the overall provincial graduation rate um, in the English Montreal School Board. That's wonderful, but there has to be a debate about whether how we measure success thereafter. And I think that that was um, accomplished tonight. There were some responses uh, um, in reaction to that particular um point of, mm. of how we're measuring success after graduation and and um, I'm not sure that I um, that I recall all of the responses one in particular had to do with the suggestion that maybe we should continue immersion to grade five and six I'm not sure if he was suggesting that immersion um, sorry that French should be taught exclusively until he seemed grade to five and I six. think that was um, mr. Legault's suggestion right. and he seemed to be suggesting that in grade five and six it was would be a full uh, immersion in completely French no mm-hmm. matter what the system that mm-hmm. you were in um, and then um, mr. Lise was talking about um, his idea of being able to switch in CGEP, which it sounded like you yes. that was your experience right you went to no well later uh, in university University of Montreal yes uh-huh. I spent a year at University of Montreal which was invaluable because it allowed me to speak French kind of um, uh, in, in familiar um, situations with, with fellow students outside of the classroom, not just the instruction in French, but also the um, engagement with francophone, purely Francophone students. Um, so were there any policies that you thought to yourself would make a difference to somebody like you and somebody like your son? There is one proposed policy. Um, I believe, again, it's Monsieur Legault to do um, an exchange um, in at the CJP level, a one-year yes, exchange. Yes, that is Mr. Lise's. That is Mr. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. Mr. Lise's mm-hmm. um, proposal. I find that very interesting. Exchange programs um, do what they're supposed to do in that they immerse uh, a student in a completely different 
language, a completely different culture. My question about that was, it, it, Mr. Lise makes it sound like it's not an option, mm-hmm. that everyone would have to do it. And, you know, you were just saying you've got a child entering kindergarten. Mm-hmm. I've got a child that say, should say a young man in Sejep <laughs> now. And the R score, I don't know, you're not there yet, but the R score is the number that is all important in Sejep. If your marks are not a certain amount, you don't get into university or you certainly don't get into the program that you like. So is this going to be everyone that has to do this? Would Francophone students have to go to English Sejep? I doubt it. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that English students, Anglophone students, would have to do a term in Sejep and would that count the same in their R score? Or do they immediately have a, a, I mean, it would be normal to have a slight dip in grades, right? And so it would how be normal do you, how to do you... have a very large dip exactly. in grades as I did in my first semester at University exactly. of Montreal because it takes actually at least a semester if not a whole year in your second language of instruction to master learn the process of learning in your exactly. second language. So uh, that's different. that was what I felt wasn't really addressed. I mean, how do you allow people to work on those second language skills without being penalized? you know, for a lifetime, not getting into the university mm-hmm. that they That's want to get to. That's an interesting point, and I will say that Lise did seem to um, uh, really make it sound like it was voluntary, and, and I'm not sure if that was how the proposal was originally, but uh, because, look, Mr. Legault was saying, well, you've obviously changed your mind, so that was one of those exchanges. Um, yeah, and I mean, I, I know from also having um, high school and CJP age children that when they get to that age, they just can't wait not to have to have sort of the education program foisted on them and make different choices too so uh all right adrian thank you so much thank you very much for having me my guest in studio is one of the people that asked a question about the english school system lots of texts coming in jonathan um anything else that uh that stuck out i wanted to read a text i don't know if i can find it now because they're coming in so fast but about institutional racism that was a hot topic tonight uh i'm kind of flip-flopping around here but um i don't know if we have any clips on institutional racism but uh we'll talk about that and if uh, we get the clip we can play it uh how do you think they handled that today jonathan well it i mean it's a it's a debate that hasn't been lively uh in the past few months but we know from earlier this year um you know there was a lot of talk about institutional racism uh quebec solidaire is the only uh party of the of the four that committed to holding an inquiry into uh, systemic racism uh, for, uh francois legault repeating his claim that while there is racism in quebec he does not believe that there's systemic racism in quebec um i think these are very uh controversial claims. I think uh, this is certainly an issue um, from what we've seen, uh, you know, just on the on the web desk here at CBC, that it resonates quite a bit with the Anglophone community. It resonates obviously with visible minorities, but it also resonates a fair bit with young people. I think this is one of those issues that there's a quite a sharp generational divide. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I think... So I think it's another one of the ways that Quebec Solidaire is um, demarcates itself from the from the other parties, but uh, not only in, in policy wise, but also kind of targeting itself at concerns that are really expressed by by younger by younger Quebecers. And I think this is one of those issues that uh, it's clearly not a big priority for the other parties. They well, well, they, they skate don't... around it very carefully, and Quebec Solidaire is 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 willing to take it on. Well, for those who are just tuning in, in fact, there was one of the two yes no questions, which of course they were unable to do. Uh, but the question was, would you continue uh, the... Uh, would you hold a, a, a commission into you, systemic commission. racism? And, and they all said no, except for Manon Massé. Nancy, your thoughts? Well, and was? one of the comments, and I thought it was pretty apropos, was, so you have three white, and we could add francophone men, saying there is no problem with racism, there's <laughs> yes. no systemic racism. And a lot of people who are affected by what they consider to be systemic racism disagreed and felt that the, it was just being lost there. And yeah. there's a, a, probably a certain dissonance if you're you're out there listening at the same time they're all acknowledging that you know there's simply you know an abysmal representation of visible minorities in the in the in the public service they're all committed to do more but at the same time they're denying that there's some kind of systemic problem there yeah. that needs to be addressed mm-hmm. exactly and uh, so that brings us to immigration which was something that was also um, addressed tonight and uh, the way that Quebec currently of course the numbers are also uh, always an issue um, on this campaign how many were going to let in but then what happens to them when once they come into Quebec, has been hotly contested. Let's just listen to uh, one of the exchanges tonight on immigration and integration. 
And I asked him about a family the other day, what they would do if the, dad, the father uh, sunk, uh, flunk his exam, and he couldn't answer. I guess you'll just drop you them know, at the uh, McDonald uh, Cartier Bridge. Can I answer that? You'll, ahead, flunk them. you'll just drop them yeah. on the yeah. McDonald Cartier Bridge in Hull and say whatever you want, get Come rid on. of these Mr. people. Legault, That's Legault. what yeah. people hear when already, they hear you, Monsieur Legault. Already, Mr. Couillard, the federal government has French and English tests. And it's also tests of knowledge about so why do you values need in so why Canada. Do you need, what do you need so one? why are you against having those tests done by the Quebec government? Why do you agree that they do these tests in Ottawa, but you say uh, Quebec? This is so we you, can't. Please, this why is, is so, that? This no. is so nonsensical. Don't you know? It doesn't make sense. Don't you know, please? Doesn't make don't sense. You know, You're against those tests. Don't you know that when uh. they pass those tests to become citizen, if they fail the test, they stay in Quebec. Yes. They stay in yeah. Quebec as landed immigrants forever if they wish. You would have the federal not government deport them. That's, not That's your true. position. That's it is not appalling. True. That's true. Come your on, position is appalling. We know Mr. you don't Mr. understand Mr. immigration. What you say is that they have to succeed the French test before coming in Quebec. Yes. Which means that you will refuse people with a lot of qualification, engineers from all kinds of countries, if they don't speak French. All right, there's uh, François Legault there at the end there. I think that was really typical of a lot of the exchanges where they were jumping in and getting their jibes. And, of course, no man, no masse. Uh, Nancy, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, I think this is what has been replaying over the last few days of François Legault and his policy of testing people and then deporting them <laughs> if they haven't learned to speak French. And people have been very critical. And over the weekend, it became clear that he wasn't exactly clear how the immigration system actually works. Yeah. Uh, that there are tests and, you know, that you do have to be here longer than he thinks uh, as a permanent resident before you can apply for citizenship. So this was, I think they, it was maybe a little bit inside baseball. People listening to it may not have known the background of the criticism Legault has faced, but they were all going after him again on this policy of testing. But, you know, Lisey is also suggesting a test, as he says beforehand. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, and what I, what I... What I found particularly interesting is in this exchange is the extent to which Lise uh, was willing to kind of become an ally, a temporary ally of Philip Couillard to attack a Legault on this issue. This is clearly uh, so the way that they kind of the Quebec electorate. We're going to get some really inside baseball here. But the way, <laughs> the, way the Quebec electorate is set up right now is that as the PQ rises, the CAQ falls. Mm -hmm. uh, they're fighting so for the same vote. They're fighting yeah. for the same vote, exactly. And so um, I think this is one of those moments where Lise felt hey, we have, uh, you know, we have the a common enemy here. And so he was quite happy to, to, to jump on board and, and, you know, get in on, on, on the pylon on, on, uh, on the go there. Uh, this, for me, I think, was a, cr a critical part. Uh, this is a critical stage, I think, really, in Francois Legault's campaign. Can he kind of uh, survive these attacks? And I think he wants nothing better for it to kind of be brushed off as inside baseball. Uh, Philip Couillard obviously wants to make this about Legault's credibility. Does he have the the wherewithal, the the knowledge to be premier? And I have to say, just in ter terms of personalities, that's something we talked a lot before the French debate, not necessarily this one. Is he definitely seemed to be getting the most riled up? Everybody else seemed to be, you know. Yeah, uh, Lise was kind of riled at times too. <laughs> just yeah, it, I guess Lise is permanently way. riled. <laughs> We're going to just quickly check in with Jeffrey Chambers, the president of the Quebec Community Groups Network, who has a debate watching party. Jeffrey, what's your overall um, uh, thought about? the debate? Uh, well, you know, it's an historic event. I think it went off very well. I think it was well organized. And I think all the leaders showed who they were. So I think voters can make very informed decisions. I think that, uh, you know, the uh, quality of their policies and the quality of their characters were both very well displayed, uh, you know, and uh, everybody can see what they're, what uh, what's on the shop shelf. So you said you were listening for three things, access to services in English, the secretariat, and school boards. Did you hear those things to your satisfaction today? We got a very clear answer on the secretariat. I, I wouldn't mind if, if the question had gone one bounce further and said, well, you put it into legislation so that it's not just uh, a, uh, a temporary thing structurally, but they also did keep it. So that's a step in the right direction. Uh, in regard to school boards, I think we heard a lot from all sides about their position on school boards, and they're quite different. So I think the Liberals and the PQ uh, would spend money differently, but they would do it through more or less the same structure, and the and the CAC would would um, eliminate school boards for our community. So right. I think that's material. Uh, I think they all talked about jobs in the civil service. I think that it's true, and they accused each other of all talking about it for 30 years and not doing anything. 
So we'll see about the future, but at least they're saying the right thing. All right, Jeff, we're, I'm going to have, I'm so sorry, I'm going to have to wrap you up there. Thank okay. you so much. Not at all. Jeffrey Chambers, president of the Quebec Community Groups Network, and they're having a debate watching party. We are, I am at the end of my clock. So I am going to ask you the dreaded question, winner, loser, Jonathan. Um, winner, loser. The English community is a winner, I think. Uh, it's a lame thing <laughs> wow. to say, but I think... Jonathan's we, running in the next uh, one. <laughs> no, I mean, I, you know, I think all of us feel quite privileged that, uh, you know, we're a, a, we're a minority group here in, in Quebec, and yet all four leaders uh, braved speaking in their second language in a debate format to, to speak to our community. Uh, that is true. I count myself lucky. That is true, Nancy. I think we haven't mentioned that Philippe Guillaume, I think, did a pretty good job of defending his record, and probably, I don't think anyone switched their vote watching tonight, but they got to know the leaders a little better, and they may think about it a bit more. Mm-hmm. Listen, it's been great uh, talking over all the points with the two of you. Thank you so much, Nancy Wood Pleasure. from CBC, and uh, Jonathan Montpetit, Thank you, from CBC analyst and web writer, and lots of Jonathan's work is online, and Nancy will be there to recap it all for you at 11 o'clock on television. And a shout-out to Deborah Arbeck. She was amazing. Thanks to all of you for listening. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm Sue Smith.